Oh, you know I like this. You know I get in the vibe. Switch, switch it up this week. Feeling groovy. Oh. You deaf punk. Ten minutes switch, song. We switch, uh, yeah, we, we, should, we should have just listened to the whole seven minutes of that. Yeah. <laughs> we would have had two views on this episode. I mean, Welcome it would have been like a, a music video to that song. You know what I'm saying? It could have been. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to a, the 27th installment of the First yes. Inches Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Michael O'Brien, here with my fantastic co-host, Mr. Aiden Florsher. I thought you were going to give back. me a little descriptive, a descriptive. I know way. I blanked on a word. I'm not going to lie. I was thinking like lavish. <laughs> lavish. <laughs> you yeah. weren't living lavish with after your picks last week. I'll say that. <sighs> don't. You don't have to rub it in like that. Because <laughs> I've been on fire. We all knew it was going to come to bite me in the ass. Regression to the mean is what they call it in statistics. Yeah, it just happens, in, especially in sports betting. You're never going to be on top of the world for obviously, the whole season. Dude, it's designed <laughs> to take money from you. So yeah, on this, that note. Yeah, and like, do you want to state your uh, your record before I... I have a little 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 statement I want to give about a little stat record, a little update for the fellow yeah, viewers. I, for sure. I went 8-5 and five last week. I'm now 100 Woo! That's the Mikey now, Sharps I love. Yeah, man. that's that's what we needed. I'm now 113, 86, and eight on the year. Money. You? Yeah. You, talk about your record a little bit. Listen, you're I'm still nine, right at five. You're still like one game under 500. You're still like floating. Dude, I'm 99, 108, which is You're floating. You'd one be, of, I mean, you'd be down money if you took everything. But when you gamble, you expect to kind of lose money. You know what I'm saying? You're not going into gambling being like, I'm gonna win a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to bring you into '80s stat corner before we go into yeah. this stat week's corner. Pr- this week's pick 'em. Uh, it's just a quick little yeah, segment. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> Woo! So the Bills, Buccaneers, Packers, Chiefs, Ravens, Chargers, and Rams are combined 36, 52, and three against the spread this season. What do the, all are these teams have in combined? What do they have in common? Yeah. What are, like, what do they have they're in common? They have seven bet teams to win the Super Bowl? No, they're all... But maybe that, too, but like they all had over a 10-win total. So it seems that wow. this a trend this year is to fade the big win total teams. Like That's how much Vegas funky. is getting in people's heads, dude. Well, we we did say Packers under eleven wins at the beginning of the year, and we were yes. very spot on. With we that. were sharp. Yeah. So yeah, that was me kidnapping your time for a minute, telling you a little sneaky, little weird stat. I just that's saw cool it stat. and I was like, "Wow, that's cool that. for the pod." Yeah, that's our new segment, Aiden Stat Corner. <laughs> yeah, it's a little. It's not predatory. It's a corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not <laughs> Aiden Stat One Day. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, it's just Aiden's corner for stats. Yeah, let's get right into these games, man. This is no teams on bye this week. Bye weeks are done. Oh, all beautiful. thirty-two team, all thirty-two teams in the league are playing. We got three games on Saturday this week. It's gonna be a fun week. Fantasy playoffs are either in the second week of, uh, second week of the first round or starting. Or just starting, yeah. Yeah. So it, this is the this is the best time of the year for football, man. <laughs> the worst the time of the year for me. I'm like this. <laughs> Sitting at home, twiddling my thumbs, because I got um, out in all both my leagues. Yeah, sh- shout out! I-, I got my dynasty league cooking, and pr- looking good in the first round right now. It's not. Do you want to shout? Good. Do you want to shout out your opponent and do a little dig at him? On, uh, <laughs> nah, nah, I love the internet. You shield, but your fa- I love you, Shield, but your fantasy team stinks. <laughs> I, I thought I, you just said no. I thought you said no, but then uh, you just yeah. digged at him. 
a yeah. little hard. I didn't want to. I'm not gonna. I hope <laughs> no one Google's him and doxes him, but I think it'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Let's get into the games. Thursday yeah. night football. Niners going into Seattle. Hype for this. Niners one. are. Niners are favored by three and a half points here on the road at the twelves. Who are you taking here, man? I want you I want you to kick it off. I am taking the Seahawks here plus three and a half. As am I. I. Spoiler. You are too? Yeah, you we'll are agree too. on this one. I, I got some like good that. stats on this one, actually. Me too, but let me just run a little spiel. I just I'm going by the the rule that you really never trust a QB that's overperforming on his third start. It's a trend that I've yeah. just created. <laughs> but in all in all of history, like when I think about it, like the third game, like Mike White's third game this year. <laughs> Brock Purdy's yeah, I mean, he's third a, game. He's this a year. seventh round quarterback. Teams are starting to get more tape on him. They'll find his flaws. I think he's decent, but, no, yeah, but I Seattle agree. at I'm, home, Purdy, yeah, it kind of. Agree. It's, Seattle's and it been, smells a little. Seattle's been stinking a little bit. It does smell a little bit, especially after the Niners wiped the floor with the Bucks last week. Yeah, I'm on the Seahawks. Also, like I said, Pete Carroll, 18 and eight against the spread as a home underdog in his career. Wow, that's a fun little stat. Division dogs. I'll pound this stat every week. They're 40 and 26 on the year. They were three and three last week, and that all, but that includes that Vikings game, which was, I feel like that line was the ultimate trap. Yeah, it's still it was a three weird and line. three. It's a trend that holds. It's been holding all year. Forty and twenty six against the spread on the year. That's a pretty good clip. Like that's that's almost that's like sixty percent ish. Probably a little less. Not exact math, but still, that's a good bet. That's a relevant betting trend. Forty and twenty six. I'm gonna ride with them. I, I I just like the Seahawks in this spot. Yeah, I totally agree. Especially when the Seahawks are in a twelve and two against the spread run at home versus the Forty Nine ers. So yeah, history backs this up heavily. 49ers are a terrible Thursday team. In their last 12 games, they're 3-9. and nine. I love the Seahawks here. Yeah, I do like the Seahawks here also. Everyone's going to be, rightfully so, everyone's going to be like Big Cock Brock. The Niners defense is really He's legit. cool. I don't think, yeah, no, he's cool. I don't think this is the high-scoring game at all. Give me the Seahawks with 3.5, for sure. I'm sure I'm sure the over-under line is probably in. I think it was 40. Yeah, I would, that's what I guess, 38 to 40. That's what Let I would have guessed. Let's do a quick search on it because that's why we have the internet at our disposal here on the First Ninja Sports Podcast. 43 and a half. I like the under heavily. I honestly. definitely would agree with you on that game. Now we got three games on Saturday. Ooh, some Saturday Introduce fun. Introduce the early Saturday game. We got one four thirty in the night game. So this is the 1 o'clock game. Yeah, so we got the Saturday game, some Saturday fun, just to, just to uh, set us off in the right dire- direction. In, in regular season Saturday games, the road team is 53-31-5. That's against the spread. Hitting at a 63% clip over the past 20 years. If you bring that down to, like, since 2018, those teams are 10-2-3 and three against the spread. Covering the spread by an average of 6.5 points. Road teams seem to be the wave on Saturday for some reason. I don't know if it's the extra day... I don't even. It doesn't make sense. I can't even justify yeah. that. That's but weird, the stats though. seem That's to back it up. So I seem to take that stat to heart on this, on this the Saturday trend. Uh, Colts at Vikings. Come on. What are you taking, buddy? Here, I want to hear what you got. I'm excited to hear what you have here. I'm taking the Colts plus four and a half. This is just a gut feeling. This is a gut feeling play. I don't know. Like, I said this to you before we started recording. The Vikings are ten and three, but they have a, a negative one point differential this year, mm-hmm. which is pretty hilarious. That's weird. Uh, yeah, it's, well, they got that blowout by the Cowboys really skewed it, but still, even if that game was a little closer, they're like ten and th- they would be like ten and three, maybe with like a plus eighteen. You know what I mean? Like it's not like they. Do they like think they have, is that the lowest ever? Is that like one of the lowest ever? Ten, 10 wins through thirteen games with a negative point differential is crazy. That's dope. That's just sports. Yeah, no, it's cool, but I think the Vikings are not, like, they're going to win that division at this point. The rest of it's shit, but. Crumble in the playoffs, maybe? Yeah, I mean, yeah. They're going to, they're definitely, I think they lose first round. I think the NFC is going to have a lot of upset. I think some of the wild card teams are going to win the first round in the NFC. 
I don't really think the Bucks are that good. Or who, maybe another team wins that division. What if the Panthers win that division? That'd be hilarious. I mean, we're definitely going to have a playoff picture episode coming out in the near future. And For when sure. that comes and out, the, it's going to look different. You know, the and NFL this week, it'll, crazy. Uh, I feel like this week will be very telling, especially with uh, the Sunday night game. But Totally agree. I just don't think the Vikings are as legit as their record says they is. I don't think the Colts win this game, but I'll take them with four and a half points. But brother, the but brother. The Vikings defense is fucking Swiss cheese, dude. The Vikings brother. defense is Swiss cheese. You're forgetting one thing. What am I this forgetting? This is 1 p.m. Kirk. Kirk. Okay, fair. So you're 1 PM, the Vikings. Dude, I'm taking the Vikings here at, with the four and a half spread. 1 p.m. Kirk is 47, 35, and 2 against the spread. When he plays after 4 o'clock, he's 21 and 31. He likes to wake up early, have a little lunch, and go directly to... Uh, the stadium. He doesn't want to wait around all day, have that mental on his head, be like, oh. That's when he starts to get in his head and really start to break down. Also, Vikings have been the most profitable team in the NFL after a straight up loss since 2015. They are 19 and 6 against the spread. I'm taking that the Vikings. That is pretty cool. Uh, they stink. Colts plus four and a half. Colts. If you how do you say that? Like that's the that's the most like paradoxical thing ever. I know. They, Vikings stink. Colts <laughs> plus four and a half. The Vikings <laughs> always play down the competition. I agree. Yeah, but yeah, ugh, the Colts stink. Man. Short week. The Colts stink. They got embarrassed by the Lions last week. I just think Minnesota's going to start leveling out a little bit. But that was also yeah. Vegas. I think that we, was such we a play Vegas Minnesota. Game. We play Minnesota next week. I think we can beat them. Honestly. All right. At, at, when you say that, let's just move on because I can't even rally around that statement, oh, we got, even though we I'd love fun, to. We got a fun division game coming right here. Isn't yes. It, I think this game starts at 4.30 on Saturday. The Ravens going into Cleveland to play the Cleveland Bill Cosbys are favored <laughs> by two and a half points. At the home. Cosbinos. The Cosbys are favored by two and a half points. Uh, Give me the Ravens here, man. Division dog, obviously. Oh, Tyler yeah. Huntley, in his career, is an underdog. 3-0 and against the spread. Short sample size, but it's something there. I just... Watson's looked rusty. I just don't see it with the Browns yeah, right now. He hasn't surprised me at all. Like, I think that's how he was going to come out anyway. You miss a year of football, it doesn't do anything good for you. He missed He'll probably never years. be the same. He missed almost two years of football. Yeah, you're right. He didn't play any... He missed all of last year. And What, he came back... Week 11. 12 games, 11 games into the year this year? No, but so like he missed, he missed people, almost two. He missed basically one and three quarters of a season of time. Yeah, and I know people that were like, years. he's going to be a top ten quarter or top five quarterback even when he not comes back. I'm like, eh. He'll probably be good next year. Give him another year of off season shit. He'll be fine. He's not saying I'm rooting for him at all. No, I I not at all. But he's insane. He's obviously a fantastic quarterback. Why do you yeah. think the Browns, the Browns gave him a quarter billion dollars guaranteed? One, because they're idiots. Knowing he was because, a rapist. Yeah, because he is one of the most talented quarterbacks in the NFL. But I, I don't see it with them this year. Give me the Ravens with two and a half points. I think, they win this, I think the Ravens win this game outright. I think you're a smart man. Cause I'm I think gonna, the Ravens are going to make a playoff run. Dude, still. I, we're, we're just two Ravens in a flock during this game. I, still th- I really do think the Ravens still make a playoff push. Off topic. But it seems like it's they're going to get Lamar back next week. They're they're probably they're fairly locked into a wild card spot. I feel like, right? Yeah, and if they're Lamar com- f- if Lamar is nine and four right now, even if they lose this week, they'd be nine and five with three games left. So they have, have to play who left out of that division? Do they have they to play, play the they play Bengals? Pittsburgh and Cleveland again. Let me look because I ha- I have Lamar on my uh, playoff team, and I'll, it's been annoying that he has been hurt. But I still love you, baby. Let's see. Yeah, they play well, the Falcons. The, they play dog shit teams. They play Fal- They go Falcons, Pittsburgh, and Cincinnati Week 18. That game's going to be gigantic. Yeah, Cincinnati. But, like, Cincinnati might be locked in already at that point, so they might not even play. Are, don't they have the same record, or do the Bengals have one more win than them right now? Because that, that game will, could very well be for the they just They just They're beat both nine and four. Kansas City. Both nine oh, okay. and, Ravens are in first place right now, I guess, on gotcha. division record or head-to-head. So. so let me just run my spiel here. Ravens have covered three straight at Cleveland. I'm taking the Ravens. Uh, Baltimore is also five and two straight up and against the spread away this season. 
And you know how we like to attack coaches once in a while. Kevin Stefanski, you are an absolute knucklehead. That's all knucklehead. I gotta say. You are knucklehead. three and four straight up, and zero oh and seven against the spread in divisional games, the most important games. What he, when in his career? There's no way in, in his, his career. Yeah, like in yeah in Cleveland. Divisional g- in Cleveland at home. This is yes. Okay. You should have clarified that. I was very confused. I was like, there's no way he's only played seven divisional games in his coaching career. That would make no well, sense. I guess in the last seven, then. Okay. What I meant to say. Oh, just like clarification on that stat. I do not yeah. want to feed our viewers false information without context. No. I would never slander somebody off context. Kevin Safansky no. is 0-7 against the spread in divisional games. In his last at seven. At home. So he, they haven't yes. covered. They, haven't, they, they don't. They have, I guess at home, but. That makes sense. They they smoked the Bengals at home this year. I gotta pull it up for you then. That, that there's no um, way that's true. I'm not trying to call you out, but that's just not true. Because they were home home against the Bengals this year. That Thursday night game, they won by 20 points. They were underdogs. Oh look. What do we look? Bengals, Bengals, Bengals. Yeah, I mean, it says Kevin Stefan- Stefanski is three and three straight up, but zero and seven. Well, now it's three and four because they lost to uh, Cincinnati, right? Yeah, but that wasn't a home game. Is it their last seven? No, it's games? it's yeah. There's no, but that makes no sense. Cause they were. It, it just says in divisional games. Where are you seeing this? Where are you reading this off? V S I N. Share the screen. I want to read this. I think they're putting out fake inf- fake news. No way. They, let me let me read this. Maybe you're just. I need to look at what how it's worded with my eyes. I'm confused. Because if they're if they haven't covered the last seven divisional games, do you see that this? Makes no sense. Let's see. Steve, Kevin Stefanski is three and three straight up, but zero and six against the spread in divisional games. Maybe against Baltimore. The Browns already, but there's n- that makes no sense because they they beat the Bengals at home as an underdog this year. Hmm, I don't know. So VSIN is putting out fake news. That's what I'm coming to. Jesus, the that makes no sense. Then, yeah, you remember that game? That was a Thursday night football game when. The Bengals were favored by like three and a half points. They were like getting eight. I just remember it. I was like, I called out on this. Yes, they were getting yes, like yes, 80% yes, of yes, the yes, bets yes. both ways. And like the Browns here. And the Browns won by like 25 points. They were three point underdogs. So that makes no sense. That was a divisional game at home. That's weird. Hmm. I'm just that trying to like. I, I, I'm not reading it wrong. I, I no, don't I, no, I thought I thought maybe you were too then. That's weird. And there's no way Kevin Stefanski's only played six divisional games. He's been the coach of the Browns for like three, four years, I believe. They play six division games a year. That's just a lie. Oh, Maybe in post-Thanksgiving games. Oh, okay. There's a clarification on that. Yes. Sorry for, the seven, sorry for the six minute delay. But yes, yeah, I'm okay. sorry. Uh, okay. I'm okay, sorry okay, to slander okay. you, VSIN. I'm. I yeah, miss. I'm sorry also. I. I. Yeah. I, was very, I, I didn't want. That, so like that's definitely wrong. If there's nothing else to it, yes, that makes sense. Then. So after yes. Thanksgiving, they haven't covered a, in a division game ever. Yes, they Thanksgiving. have never. Yes, he gets a little. But it actually full, matters. A little stuffing. That doesn't include the playoffs, though, because they smoked the Steelers. No, but we're talking about reg just season. like reg, 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 reg. I agree. Give me the. Let's break. move Give on to the next game. Yeah. yeah. That Dolphins, took way too long. <laughs> Dolphins are going into Buffalo to face the Bills. Bills Mafia. Bills Mafia. <laughs> Bills are favored by seven and a half. I'm taking the Bills here. I am also. We're agreeing way too much. You again. also. But I think I think we're going to disagree on some of the Sunday games. Yeah, give me the. Yeah, Bills I, I agree. Dolphins are three and fourteen straight up, and four twelve and one against the spread in their last seventeen games at Buffalo. That's crazy. Dolphins are one and five against the spread in their last six games on the road, and since 2020, Allen is eight and two straight up, 
seven and three against the spread in December, making him the most profitable quarterback of December. They call him the they call him Santa, giving out little gifts of units. That's a very cool left statistic. And right. I didn't have any cool statistics like that, but this is another gut play. Honestly, I think this line is very telling, considering the Bills lost outright to Miami earlier in the season. Them getting seven and a half points is, I think, Vegas telling you take the Dolphins with seven and a half points. I'm going to take the Bills here also. And now all those stats that you just brought up, like a little computer, really make me feel more confident in this pick. Give me the Bills. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a surefire fade. Like, your gut wants to take Dolphins with the points, but I think my brain really knows to take the Bills here. your Your gut says Dolphins with the points, but... It's not, it's not. That's what Vegas wants you to do. Yeah, the, that's what those they, little tricksters at DraftKings want you to do. Yeah, they have a little. We love uh, DraftKings. Sponsor us. Yeah, sponsor us. We get sponsor us with code first and inches. That'd <laughs> yeah, be sick. exactly. That'd be cool. That would be very sick. Throw us into Sunday, kid. Yeah, kick kick us off Sunday one p.m. Heavy Sunday slate, twelve games on the docket. Oh, uh, okay. So. The Falcons are, you know how much we talk about the Falcons here. We're either squaw, squaw, or we're both either of these teams, both of these killing teams are birds. Both of these relevant topics of conversation <laughs> on this podcast. I yes, considering for we're how, nowhere near. shit they are. <laughs> we're nowhere near Atlanta or New Orleans, so this no. is hilarious. They're just great, great teams to just, like, talk shit about, honestly, yeah. and ride. I was also the conductor of the Falcons train for some time. I'm taking that cap this week, putting it on. Choo, choo, choo. I'm taking the Falcons. I'm loving the Falcons this week. Atlanta is on a 13-5 straight up and 12-6 and against the spread run in its last 18 post bye week games. They're the post bye week kings. You know what they're doing all week? Arthur Smith is not letting them even touch a gaming controller. Touch their wives. <laughs> semen retention the whole week. <laughs> semen retention. Nothing. You have to hold it till Sunday night. Arthur Smith is literally the fucking uh, chastity belt of the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, On that but, note. But no, but I, I interesting kick... enough, if you took the Saints. <laughs> Arthur Smith. The Be Falcons are 7-1 and one against the spread in their last eight post bye week road games but did lose to New Orleans in 2020, so the Saints might be the kryptonite coming in and uh, yeah. coming all over the party. The Saints, girl, <laughs> hey, I can't get hyped. <laughs> yes, I want to be in that number. Oh, sing it, Louie. I win the Saints, Saints girl, Give me the Saints for four and a half points at home here. Boo. Rookie quarterback in his first start out of the third round. Think it's going to get a little ugly. <laughs> it's going to get ugly. Saints have a decent defense. They should have won that game last week if they just didn't like close their eyes completely and fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I just think Narc the Saints will win this yet, it's game by a touchdown. Yeah. Four and a half here for the Saints. I think they win this game by like a touchdown plus. No. Rookie quarterback. This whole Mariota situation is weird with Arthur Smith. That press conference was weird. The uh, semen uh, retention baby, press conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah the <laughs> semen retention press conference. I think that locker room probably just doesn't give a flying fuck at this point. <laughs> They're just going out there like, um... I'm also, yeah, I'm also... What? So I, give, <laughs> I give my job of the Falcons conductor to you. Fuck yes, them. I've got the hat. I rode with them, and they have just never... I was like, I'm the conductor, and they suck, so... I mean, for like the first four weeks, they were the the money. Dude, they were like the start of the year six and, like, seven and one against the spread. <laughs> and I was taking them all the time. I was like, let's go. Squaw! But fuck Squaw! Me. Squaw! 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 <laughs> That's and me this week. Fa- fading two divisional dogs in a row is very unlike me. It but is, but especially when Atlanta's the post by King. I don't care. It's a rookie quarterback with Arthur Smith. It's gonna, they're going to score like four points. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> the Saints might score two off a of safety or something. <laughs> good, good point. <laughs> this next <laughs> game is this yeah, next game on. is interesting. Yeah, I kind of like I this want, game. This, uh, yeah, I do too, weirdly. The Philadelphia Eagles going into Chicago. Chicago. Play the Bears. The Play the Bears. 
The Eagles are favored by nine points on the road here. They just spanked the Giants last week, sadly. That was horrible. Yeah, I'm upset. Don't want to talk about it. Not going to mention it. But, yeah, give me the Bears here. Nine points. That's a lot. Da Bears. Philly is 2-4 two and, two and four against the spread on the road this year. That includes them spanking the Giants last week. So they were 1-4 and four against the spread on the road coming into last week. They really haven't covered on the road great this year. Uh, home dogs of 8-plus points this year. This is a fun one. 6-2 mm-hmm. and two against the spread. So they've covered at a 75% clip. Home dogs, 8-plus points. And especially with a quarterback like Fields who can just like flip a game on his head with his legs, give me the Bears with 9 points. For sure. Wow. I mean, I like what you're saying, but I'm completely fading everything you said. Fair. I really don't care. Yeah, this game could easily be a 40-point blowout. Listen, I res- you know how much I respect you as a handicapper? Yeah. I hate. I just hate this pick from you, man. I think the Bears. I, I, I kind of hate it so much. Yeah, some of these pictures, that's what we've been doing, though. I've been hitting on those a little bit lately. No, like, this I pick know. is so I- gross, it's going to work. <laughs> Uh, I saw a trend that you should play against uh, home underdogs coming out of their bye week. Like the favorites against the home underdogs are hitting at a 64% clip, 27, 15, and 1 since 99. Wow, that's that's a wild stat. I didn't realize since it was like... And uh, Justin Fields, he is a great quarterback, great talent, not a great... Uh, Against the spread, he is fifteen and thirteen in Sunday games. <laughs> against that's the spread, a t- yeah, that's a twenty-eight percent clip. Fifteen and thirteen, five and thirteen. I, I oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, fifteen and thirteen is over five hundred. That's no, no, good. no. Five and thirteen. Yikers! On Sunday games. <laughs> okay. The average line was plus four and a half. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so give me nine points. That's double that. Okay. Kick, yeah. us, kick us off. Kick us off with this next one p.m. game. Yeah, I don't got really much to say here. Uh, Cowboys favorites by four and a half are going to Jacksonville. They're probably going to get a little tan. Maybe, uh, you know, surf. I don't know if there's any beaches in Jacksonville. I'm just taking probably a quick guess. Probably Florida. I would yeah, assume maybe. That's where Who the knows? two and two went together. They have the pool. They have a pool in the stadium. They can cool off there. Yeah, they'll cool off there after absolutely destroying the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence is 0-9 straight up and against the spread in non-conference games. <coughs> Excuse you. He, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, he, he just hasn't gone his way against non-conference foes. I mean, the latest one was when they got actually cuckolded by the Lions 40 to 14. They were literally schlacked. So yeah, I'm going with that. Giving you a little core beef and cab play on this one. Don't tell me it's an absolute fade. Jaguars money line is the core beef and cabbage play this week. I don't think I've hit one yet. One of them's gonna hit. I respect it. But it's no, also, it's no, it's no Hanukkah play, but yeah, no, give me, the, yeah, give me the Jags plus four and a half though for the pick'em record. I think they cover here. I just think this is the time of the year the Cowboys usually go to shit. So, and they struggled very terribly with the Texans last week. The Texans literally tried to lose that game. They like brought in Rex Burkhead on the goal line. They're like, yeah, let's not, let's not <laughs> score here. <laughs> yeah, like, what, are, what are they even thinking, bro? Like that's the I was honestly like I lo- I was they're, watching they're, that. They I'm were like, thinking they were thinking Bryce Young. <laughs> yeah, but like I don't know. They were thinking Bryce Young. Exactly they're actually kind of good at tanking. <laughs> yeah, no, they're good at it. They, they were like Bryce Young time. But yeah, give me the Jags on the money really? line. Trevor Lawrence has been absolutely crushing it recently. I just think this is a spot the Jaguars could win, especially at home. Cowboys D is no joke, though, yo. Yeah, I know, but Trevor Lawrence has been shredding people, regardless of who's been playing. So no doubt, I'm he's great. Take the Jaguars plus four and a half and money line for the. I mean, I would never cabbage. wish for a corn beef and cabbage play to miss, so I'm just gonna go Cowboys minus four and a half here. <laughs> Fair enough. This uh, next I'll game a, oh, is a fun one. Did I do? Oh, okay, you do this next yeah. one. Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. 
Lions going into MetLife Stadium playing the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Jets are favored by a point. Give me the Jets. I think the Lions are due to lose a game. What, they won six of seven. They look amazing. Everyone's hyping them right now. Jets defense is incredibly real. I think this will be a public pick this week. I think everyone will be on the Lions, to be completely honest. Er, the early splits show that a little bit. Yo, even I'm though also on, on the Wednesday. Jets. Do you yeah. want to make this the first at inches official play? Are you I'm down? down. I, got a, I got another stat. Jets, right, go this year, f- Jets this year are 5-0 and against the spread after a loss. Ooh. So, give me the J-E-T-S. I'm loving Jets, that, Jets, man. Minus one. I think this is a very good bet. I, yeah, this is the first pitch's official. Jets yeah. minus one. FAI approved. Stand. Dude, I, I was, I was looking on Action Network. It, they're plus one, I think, now. I believe. It moved? No, I saw it at minus one. I saw it best odds plus one. Yeah, but that's not what certain books offer different odds. I, I, you got, I, you gotta click on the game and, uh, yeah. Then who do you, who do we use, like who do you like specifically get these lies from? I'll show. Here's what it says: DraftKings has it at Jets minus one. FanDuel has it at Lions minus one. Uh, Caesars and Point Bet have it as a pick 'em. Consensus is Jets minus one. Word. Yeah. Uh, when coming, I'm taking the Jets. Yeah, the Lions when I could see this game be turned going like a pick 'em. When Lions come off a double digit win, they beat the Vikings thirty four twenty three last week. Goff is three and nine straight up, and four and eight against the spread. So, so when they have a good game, they usually poop his pants after. I mean, yeah, it's 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 so destined. It's like me coming down from that miraculous betting streak. You're gonna come. You're gonna yeah, come. You're gonna down. level out eventually. Especially against a great defense here. It's, That's kind of my argument here, too. Tough. Yes. I think they're due to lose a game, and the Jets' defense is very real. Also, them being 5-0 and against the spread after a loss is very interesting. And that's a pretty fucking relevant trend. They've lost five games this year, 5-0. and So, yeah. give me the especially at home, give me the Jets minus one. I like that. I like the first and interest official play. Sealed. Signed. Delivered. Next game. Uh... Steelers of the Pittsburgh kind are moving to the Panthers, who are favored by three by three points. Incoming Hanukkah play, Steelers money line. No doubt about it. Uh, Steelers are 8-0 against the spread in their last eight games against the NFC South. Uh, and are 6-0 and straight up and 6-0 and against the spread in their last six meetings versus Carolina. So they've been rocking them historically. I'm loving this pick. I love the Steelers. Maybe the Panthers actually decide to tank a little bit like, oh, shit, maybe we shouldn't go to the playoffs this year. It would make no sense <laughs> maybe for our we franchise. we should accidentally win the division. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Steelers have more heart. I think this comes down to a heart. Steelers Give me the Panthers. Have- Give me the pet. That's dude. disgusting, bro. It's so disgusting. It's right. No, it's this is. A, I feel like so, I feel like I've said this for a couple games. I have. This is another kind of telling line to me. You're gonna see everyone bring up like Mike Tomlin is an underdog against spread a million and gazillion to four. That, I didn't that, bring that, it up, teams, but I'll say that right now because Mike you know, Tomlin's the goat. He no, I do love Mike Tomlin, but I'm not trying to say that the shit on Mike Tomlin. That doesn't have the context of none of those Steeler teams. Absolutely stunk to the high heavens like this one does. No, totally. And, but he just and pick it, his pick up. it's up in the air. It might be Trubisky this weekend. It's just That's such a worse. Cool. The Panthers have a pretty solid defense. They just won a game on the road in Seattle last week. We've made this point many times. They are the worst tanking team I've ever seen of all life. time. Like they're so they're so bad at tanking. It's hilarious. They're winning games. They're, they've won poor games. They're like they. they what Dude, are they, they look they better than the New York yeah. Giants. They look know, better than New York it's Giants. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. <laughs> they traded McCaffrey and vastly Fired improved. their coach. <laughs> yeah, that was probably a major reason why they vastly just, improved. But, like, when does that happen, though? Like, a team like, know, just totally commits to a tank and then somehow just gets and fucks it up. Yeah, they start winning. <laughs> it, it, it is funny. Give me the Panthers, man. I, I'm going to continue with that narrative that they're completely botching the tank. They already did. They have they five did, wins. Yeah. They're not I mean, getting one of the QBs. In our power rankings, we had them in the bottom three teams for projected pick. Yeah, like, that I, was I like thought three or they four were going to lose every week. 
honestly. But no, I, I said they were better. Now than I'm you. taking now I'm taking it with three points <laughs> against the Steelers, which is wild to me. But yeah. okay, I respect it. I mean, listen, we could always disagree. We could always agree to disagree. That's what's one good thing about this show. For we sure, we don't hold grudges over picks. And none of these picks, not all these, it's not like all these picks are going to be correct. Oh no, definitely. Not. <laughs> I go three. I go three games above five hundred. I'm like doing the nay nay. Yeah, you've hit. I just saw you hit the whip. Before yeah. we hit the uh, record button. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I did the TikTok dance. I did the, I just want to rock, rock, rock. Body out of ya. Hey. <laughs> Last game of the 1 p.m. slate, before we get to the later games, the Chiefs going into the tank factory in Houston. God. Chiefs are favored by 14 points on the road here. Uh, uh, give me the Chiefs. Everyone, I think people are going to take the Texans after last week. After they almost beat Dallas, and I think this game is a blowout. Yeah, me too. No Damian Pierce, Chiefs yeah, all day. This, uh, Chief this game is going to stink. Yeah, this game is going to be an absolute slaughter. Give me the cheat. I don't think we really need to talk. No, about best it. offense versus worst team in the league. I'm, I'm taking them minus twenty one probably. Yeah, the Chief. The Chiefs also covered that uh, sixteen and a half point spread a couple weeks ago against the Rams. They've covered. I think they've covered a couple other big. Rams are arguably big a better team this year. too. Like at that point, even how yeah. down bad they were at that point. Yeah, for sure. They had Sean McVay at least. So yes. give me the Chiefs with fourteen points here. Yeah, move That's, on. I'll I'll yeah. move on quickly. Yeah, Who kick, cares about kick, that game? Kick it off. Yeah, that game's gonna be a blowout. We'll probably be wrong, and the Texans will lose by three points. It's Sunday. You're full from that overbearing lunch you had of wings. Yeah, you got Fries. a little bit too. You got a little bit too aggressive on the habanero mango sauce, and yeah. you need a couple. You need some Pepto Bismol. You need a. Pepto I'm speaking from personal experience, if you couldn't tell. And some nicotine to pass that of of obscene amount of agita in your chest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure nicotine helps chest pain. <laughs> uh, the Patriots. We're, we're not doctors, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> No, I'm certified in ga- uh, in gambling and line movement. That's about it. <laughs> I, have a, I have a PhD in reverse line movement. Thank you. Yes, so the Patriots are taking a little trip to Vegas, maybe throw in a little red, and they are... Bel- you think Belichick's a red or black guy before I even... Like, on roulette. Belichick's a green zero guy. You think? Yeah. You don't think he has, like, his, like... You think I think he would have like a schematic way of playing it, you know? Yeah, probably. He's probably like counting cards. Or, I like to picture Belichick just letting loose and drinking like seventeen whiskey sours, and putting a couple G's on zero. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We yeah. Play, so we just lost Pats the Giants at, <laughs> again. Fuck. <laughs> Pats at Raiders. It's a pick 'em. I'll take it. The star, the Raiders. I just think this game comes down to who makes the last mistake. Vegas is five and two against the spread in its last seven games against the AFC, and six and two against the spread in its last seven home games, and more specifically, four and zero oh against the spread in its last four games against a team with a winning record. So, give me the Patriots. I'm loving the, Ra- I'm loving the, Ra- uh, the Raiders here. I think everyone and their mom is going to be all over the Patriots here. It's going to be like. Oh, I'll, it's early, obviously, we're recording early. this on the Wednesday, but the splits look pretty even from what I saw. But it's very early. It's I think early. this comes down to 7.30, Pats. Give me give me the Patriots all day. I don't care. It's Bill Belichick versus Josh McDaniel. And Josh McDaniel is going to outsmart him with his 155 IQ. No, the dude stinks. <laughs> give me the Patriots. The Patriots, have, the Patriots actually have a defense. The Raiders are I- poop. Dude, Derek Carr but, isn't good. Derek Carr. Am I friends. wrong with this? Ra- Raiders can beat anyone, but can lose to anyone also. Yeah, because Derek right? Carr is incredibly inconsistent, and they're coaching. They, so. they just, they just like beat themselves every week. It, it yeah. pisses me off. It's called Derek Carr, a bad coach. No, it's not Derek Carr, dude. It's literally every. Derek Carr was like him. seventeen of thirty last week. For all, all right, moving much. on. I don't want to hear about this Derek Carr slander. <laughs> we don't slander besmirch Carr. We're trying to get Patriots him on as our. Nice. We're trying to get him on as our first guest. And then I'll, then I'll berate him. I'll be like, why do you have a 70 QBR? You stink. And then he'll be like, <laughs> he'll hang up and we'll be like, damn, that just fucked yeah, up the I, interview. I, I, I fucked that up. It'll be and a good clip, though. Then we'll have to settle for, da- for David Carr. <laughs> Ex-Giant. 
No, we're probably not. Then I, oh, shit. I, if that happened, the Carr family would not be fans of us. <laughs> no. Get into this next game. My chair just Card- broke, I think. Oh. <laughs> All right. Cardinals going into Denver. Backup quarterback battle here. Rippy and Broncos Burns. are favorites by three points at home. Here's all I'm going to say. Let's ride. Let's ride. That's the most obvious pick Broncos. ever, Let's too. Let's ride. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I'm in with One you. One more time, Broncos country. Let's I'm going to eat a dangerous Broncos sandwich, country. or whatever he calls ride. it. I'm going to have so many lemon peppers. Broncos in country. Sandwich. Let's, Let's ride. ride. What does yeah. he call it? The the danger rush? The danger witch. The danger oh. witch. Yeah. <laughs> we should have we should have a few of those on on like yeah. on the stream. Yeah, well Eating our next every episode. Danger witch. Yeah. The be- the best sandwich award goes to Russell Wilson. Yeah. For a subway yeah. sandwich. How this how is, much can you sell out? That's the most garbage that's shit I've ever heard. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. <laughs> but give me the home team with a better defense here. Backup quarterback game, two absolute doofus coaches. I'm going to take the team with a better defense, and that is home. <coughs> Give me the Broncos. Yeah, me too. Not much other logic. I think Broncos' defense, like you said, is going to really be the X factor to this game. Cardinals' offense looked pretty bad once. Uh, even when Kyler was in, I, I saw something. They're like the bottom five scoring teams this year. It's pretty brutal. So Broncos is going to – Broncos will cover the three with no problem. I t- agree with you on that one, sir. Moving on to the next game. Yes, sir. The Tennessee Titans will be taking a plane trip to San Diego. Home they of Drake were, and yeah. Josh. Mm-hmm. Los Angeles, not San Diego. They're in I Los know, Angeles but I, I, just kind of, I, I, I just love to uh, just picture them still there. It, it really brings back nostalgia. It is weird, nostalgia. It is weird that they're in Los Angeles now. Because the point. I, when I think of the Chargers, I think of Philip Rivers, San Diego. I don't know, and and losing immediately in the playoffs. No, you you know what I mean though. Like those colors just do mean San Diego. Yeah, beyond that point, I'm taking the Chargers here as much as it fucking rips my heart out. Like I, this pick makes me want to gag. Get the puke bucket, please. I hate this pick. I hope it loses. Honestly, I'm Chargers are Chargers are eight. Pick. Chargers are eight and one against. 8-1-2 and two against the spread in their last 11 meetings with the Titans. And 6-1 and one against the spread in their last 7 home games in this series. I'm just going with that. I hate Pizza Face. I hope he gets injured on their way to the game. Hey, don't say that about Pizza Face. Just call I really face. hate Herbert. Yeah, his face kind of bothers me for some reason. I think he is pr- fairly overrated. I I'm not, I'm not to, saying I don't, a season. The, I don't want to get into the Emmanuel Acho thing here. What do you or, mean? Saying, like, Herbert is... Complete trash, but he's he's overrated a little bit. We were the first Emmanuel Achos, honestly. I know yeah, we, we always did about say now. Herbert. Was, yeah, we always did say Herbert was kind of mid. But if he got like a t- if he broke his toe on the way to the stadium and couldn't play, I would be like, yes. that'd be kind of funny. <laughs> no, okay, I guess. Yes. So. I'm yeah, not talking definitely. serious injury. I'm talking like little nagging injuries that just like oh, give me the my Titans. elbow kind of hurts. Titans plus three. Titans are five and two against the spread on the road this year. Like you said, Chargers feels like a gross pick. I feel like this is kind of a letdown spot for them. And like we said, the Chargers are always going to charger. They always lose games. They we think they win, and win games we think they're going to lose. Yeah. So give me the Titans in this spot with three points. They've covered all over the place. They've been very good on the road. Five and two against the spread on the road is crazy. So yeah, give me the Titans with three points. I didn't think it was really that gross in like meaning the line. I'm just think it's gross because I hate the Chargers and I would. Yeah, I can't. Tru- I would never. I would never trust. I would never trust them as a favorite. If Justin Herbert logistically, asked they me to always come on the pod, play. They, I would say no. Regar- my our entire lives, regardless of what their team is like, I feel like they always play up and down in competition. Yeah, they're never weird fails. week to week. They're not very never consistent. Fails. Never fails. Just the way their team always is. This last game, 4 p.m. This is an interesting one. This line is very weird, I feel like. It's very telling. Yeah. Bengals going into Tampa Bay. Bengals are favored by three and a half points on the road. I'm going to take the Buccaneers here. Plus three and a half points. This is... We're, I'm, we're bucking a pretty major trend, if you agree with me. I'm assuming you are with that nod. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going with the, the Bucks here heavily. Yeah, I this, really like this, this, line is, this line is funky. 
I'm assuming the Bengals are going to be the most public team this week, especially with them only getting three and a half. People are going to buy it down on teasers. People mm-hmm. are going to take the money line at like minus 170 in parlays. I can see the Bucks winning this game outright. This is a crazy trend that we are bucking here. The Buccaneers are 0-5 and 1 against the spread at home this year. I just don't see that continuing. But they're going to cover. But, it's Brady. They're going to cover a game at home eventually. They haven't covered a game at home this year. That's crazy. Give me them with three and a half points here. They still have a defense. The Bengals are a darling team right now. I believe they're ten and three against the spread. Also, they're ten and two nine. against the spread on the road, which is scary. That makes no sense. Now they play twelve road games. Their last, their, two, last maybe their, last, their last twelve. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, but give me the Buccaneers. Everyone, this this is a telling line. The the you would think the Bengals would get at least six. five points here. Yeah. I was thinking six. But yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. You would think that this line would be closer to six than three. So no, I, I'm in total agreement. Uh, this trend is actually very giving me hope. Honestly, the Bucks have covered five in a row versus Cincinnati sneakily. No one's going to talk about that, or none of your analysts on ESPN are going to say that. Um, yeah, like you said, I'm, this is this is a mitzvah play. Bucks I'm taking money? Bucks alternate minus three and a half. We're flipping it. We're gonna flip Ooh, it. I like. I don't even care what it is. Just take it. I like it. I like it. So prime Sunday night, games. yeah, Sunday night football, prime time, exciting game. This is this has huge playoff implications. Gigantic for both playoff teams. implications in the NFC for a lot of teams. This has gigantic playoff implications for a lot of teams. I think you might hate me for this pick. I'm You're taking the lie. commies. I'm taking the commies here, man. Uh, Fuck you. Remember the one time I faded the Giants this year and yeah, what happened? Yeah. We beat the Jaguars outright. Listen, I'm I'm hoping for a little reverse psychology. I'm doing a little mental hedging here. <laughs> I just... Give me the Giants. Fuck <sighs> yeah, baby. Division dog. I got we're numbers. St- I, we're stinking. I know. Man. I got numbers. We've stuck for the last. Four Four years, I got numbers. Daniel Jones. I also have numbies. Okay, let me give you some numbies. Yeah, hit me. Daniel Jones in his career, 9-4 and four against the spread as a divisional underdog. Wow. And divisional dogs this year, like we've said, 40-26 and 26 against the spread. We tied the last time we played them. We should have won. We gave up a touchdown on the circle button by Jahan Dotson with a minute 30 left. So, uh, give me the Giants with four and a half points. I honestly have no faith that we win this game. But I think it's close. Okay. I can see that. I, I just, bro, like, I think Sunday night football primetime games are totally different than just 1 p.m. games and regular games. Sunday football's pressure. You have the whole world watching. And, and I think they know, this is the season. Yeah. This is the season for both teams. Uh, I would, the, it depends on what happens with Seattle and Detroit this week. But in essence, yes. But they, but like you have to win. Record. You have to yeah, win. We need to win. It's a so for both teams. home field advantage has been a pretty big factor in divisional Sunday night football games as of late, with the hosts owning a fifteen and six straight up record and a fourteen six and one against the spread record. That's a seventy percent clip since yeah, twenty nineteen. So that's the only reason why. Like I'm gonna be obviously rooting for the Giants. I could care less about this pick here, but like. For my sake of the record, I'm taking the commies. Even right, though it's disgusting. Yeah, you're a turncoat. Monday <laughs> Night Football. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm a turncoat. <laughs> <laughs> Monday Night Football. Rams going into Green Bay with a bunch of drunk Wisconsin idiots and some cheese yeah. curds. Blacked out. But, yeah. There's, but there's, there's going to be no Rams fans there. Not one. No. If you could spot one, give, I'll give you 100 bucks. I don't think there's any Rams fans anywhere, to be honest. No. <laughs> if you can find one, it's just DM like, us. The Rams games is just like Ice Cube and David Dobrik in the stands. <laughs> so. Make it content. Uh, yeah. Packers are favored by seven points at home here. I'm going to take the Packers with seven points here, man. Uh, I, this is, I hate it so much. I like it. This is a must-win game for the Packers if they want. Any chance of being a wild card team, they need to win out, and it has to start this week. I could just see 
the Rams getting shit on this week. Everyone's going to be on Baker after last week's comeback. Kind of rightfully so. That was remarkable. But um, crazy. Yeah. The Packers, even though they've been horrible, they're not the Raiders coached by Josh McDaniels. So I'm going to take the Packers with seven points here. That The Raiders should have beat the Rams by 30 points last week. They just they really couldn't, should have. They couldn't get a first down in the second half. It was embarrassing, man. I'm going to take the Packers by seven. I respect that pick, but I'm going to fade it. I, I'm i going to take the Rams here, even though when I was taking this pick, I kind of forgot Baker Mayfield was going to be on this team again. Yeah, Bake so, Show. It's going to be the Bake Show. I don't – that's just me, like, saying, like, oh. <laughs> yes, but the only reason why I'm going to take the Rams here, favorites of seven points or more on Monday are 40-1 and one, 41 and 10 straight up, but are only 18, 31, and 2 against the spread. 37% clip. Yeah. So I'm just going to back the so dog 63% here. 63% back in the dog. It's pretty good. Yeah. Favorites like are only hitting at that 37% clip. So I'm rocking with that. I'm loving that. I'm loving this. I like it. The slate, actually. I, we we, we, we faded each other a good amount, I feel like. This is going to be a fun one. See who does good, see who shits the bed. We're naming this Rivalry Week. Yeah, this is Rivalry We're almost at the end of the year. It's getting close. Yeah, you could, if, we, if you have a good week and I shit the bed, you could come come back. It's playoff time. It's playoff time. It literally time. is. It is playoffs. It is. Well, thank you guys for listening to another episode of the First Inch of Sports Podcast. Like, subscribe, comment. Share this with your friends. Tell a thank friend, you tell all. a friend. Yeah, thank you guys for listening. Follow all our social medias down below, Twitter, TikTok. Thank you guys so much. We love you. Deuces. Happy holidays. Deuces. Out.